Hey everyone, it's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I absolutely love watching videos that have a certain number of cards that you can make with a very limited number of techniques. So today on my channel for the first time, I'm going to be doing one of those types of videos. This is going to be four cards with two dies or two dies, four cards. I haven't decided how I want it to go yet, <laughs> but it's the same thing. So today I'm going to be using Butterfly Garden layer A, B, and C, and these are all from Birch Press Designs. And you can see I sort of layered them here with the colored cardstock that I'm going to be using. So my first layer, layer A, has the largest pieces that will cut out. So this is going to be my very top layer. I'm going to go in a bit of an ombre effect. I want to go from lightest to darkest. So this purple is my lightest purple of the three that I'll be using. So I'm going to use my tool in one here just to peel off this uh, cover plate uh, die cut. And because I don't want any rips and it's pretty delicate, this first layer especially because, it, as I said, the pieces that it cuts out are the largest. Uh, so I just want to be really careful with that. My second uh, color is going to be this sort of mid-tone of purple, and you can see there on the left that I just put it right underneath. And then finally, my third uh, color is the darkest purple, and that's going to be my bottom layer. I love the bottom layer of this set, especially because I don't show it very well right here. The camera doesn't really pick it up, but it's got a lot of really beautiful embossed pieces that look like the butterflies are sort of flying around. So this is also a really great layer to use on its own, but I will be using it as my bottom layer today. This is a mistake, what I'm doing here. I should have put the glue on this top piece here because the holes are larger, the pieces that are cut out are larger on each plate that goes on top of the other one. So the glue is sort of seeping out of those larger holes. So I've learned my lesson here, and on this very top plate, I am just putting tiny little dabs of glue onto the actual plate that I'll be adhering on top of the other, and I keep saying plate, but I mean die cut, the uh, cover plate die cut. So I'm going to finalize this here by just placing that final die cut piece on top. And then we've got this really beautiful three layer A2 sized piece of uh, cardstock or three pieces of cardstock, but it all comes together as one. I love the detail in this die set. This is one of my favorites. And then I just put a really large acrylic block over it so that it dries nice and flat. I am going to then cut out a circle from the top center of this die cut, of the cover plate die cut, and I'm going to hold it in place with some washi tape. And because this cardstock is a bit lighter, this is a 65 pound cardstock, cardstock, sorry, I'm going to be able to put it through my Gemini Junior with no problem. I love the Gemini Junior, especially for Birch Press Designs dies. It is so great and cuts out intricate dies with no problem at all. So this was not a problem for my Gemini Junior. To add a little bit of something to this circle die cut that I've just gotten from that full cover plate die, I'm going to put it on a piece of vellum. I've cut the vellum out from the very next circle or the very next size of the circle in my infinity circle dies. And you may have noticed that the butterflies along the edge are leaving it a bit open. So it's not an actual circle. It's a circular shape, but those butterflies are actually open to the very edge. I want to close that in. I wanted to think of a creative way to do that. So I'm using the same size circle that I die cut that out with and I'm using it as a stencil with a gold gel pen and I'm just creating this gold circle around it so that when I adhere them together that gold circle will actually close in those edges those empty edges or open edges there and I just think it looks really nice it gives it a little something and then I also carry on in the actual card a little bit later with gold uh, just to make sure that it all is cohesive and is all together. 
So I'm adhering this circle die cut to an A2 size card. I will actually end up cutting this down to a more square type of card, um, but for right now, I don't press down all the way because I'm not sure of the position I'd like it in. If you don't press down the way, foam tape is a bit forgiving in that you can lift it up and move it around a little bit. So here are the card fronts that I ended up with, and here's my circle die cut card. I did cut it down to four by four and a quarter, and then I placed it onto a four and a quarter by four and a half piece of, or a base for a card. And it's a little bit of a different size, but I really love the way that it came out. And here is the A2 size card. I just added a sentiment there in the center that says, thank you for your friendship. And this was using the Lingo Thanks uh, die and stamp set. And I really love this stamp set. It has really great sentiments that you can use across the board. And I love that the coordinating dies cut out the stamped larger words in the set. It gives a lot of versatility to the set itself. So now I'm going to go ahead and start on my next two cards. I'm going to be using the Big Friends Sugar Script die for this, and this comes with the actual word die and the shadow die, but I'll only be using the word die for today's cards. I'm going to be using this colored or patterned paper today. It's actually just a solid color, um, but also I'm going to be using a white, just a white piece of 65 pound cardstock on top of that. And this patterned or colored paper is from the stamp market. Now I'm going to go ahead again and put this through my Gemini with all four sheets and I'm going to line the friend die up in the center of those six by six sheets. I did have to use a metal shim in my Gemini and there are ways that you can sort of make sure that you get it in the same spot across the board. Um, but actually if you just have it close, the same system will work here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and show you how I did it, but it will also work if it's just slightly off. You're just going to have to line up your uh, cut out word on your cardstock like this. But for the first card anyway, we're going to be using the actual die cuts of the word friend. So I'm going to be adhering these slightly off center of each other. So instead of one directly in the same position on top of another one, I'm going to do every other one slightly to the left. So we're going to end up with sort of this like trippy looking uh, word die and it's going to have lots of colors in it. And we're going to end up making a really nice, clean and simple card with a little bit of pattern paper. And it's always great when you're able to use pattern paper because we all have tons of it. So here's what that looks like all together. It's again, it's very simple, but it does make a big impact. I'm now going to go ahead and start work on my other card. I'm going to be doing the same basic technique here where I'm adhering all of these pieces of cardstock together, but I'm doing this slightly off center. So we get the opposite look with the um, negative die. So it's going to say friend, but obviously the word friend is going to be cut out, but you'll be able to see all of those colors of the cardstock as well. When I'm done gluing this all together, I'm going to set again my very large acrylic block on it and put it to the side so that it dries nice and flat. And here is the card that I came up with for my word die cut. This pattern paper is also from the stamp market and I just went ahead again and used the Lingo Thanks stamp set uh, for the you're in my heart sentiment and then I use the heart arch dies uh, for those tiny little hearts and I decided to use them for the dot and the eye. Here's what I came up with for my negative die cuts. You can see again all of those colors in that negative die and this looks a lot like a masculine type card to me and I have some trouble with those. So this is going to be a great idea and a great technique for me to keep in my back pocket when I need those masculine cards. I hope that you've enjoyed the video and gotten some ideas on how you can stretch your supplies and use your dies for multiple cards just from one go through on the die cutting machine. As always, all of the links to the products are in the description as well as links to this blog post on the Birch Press Designs blog. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you again very soon. Thanks. Bye.